Welcome back. Um, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyeso Mwike, who was the former uh, governor of River State, has promised to repair transportation in the FCT with the two billion naira allocation that he has been given, or uh, the two billion dollar naira allocation. Just let's leave it that way. Uh, we uh, have also a public affairs analyst who will be helping us uh, uh, look into that statement. Uh, he is Mr. Nick Agule. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Agule. Uh, good morning and good morning to uh, you as well. Okay. Um, yes, we know that uh, Jensen Wike is Mr. Project, as they used to call him. He, he did a lot of things in Port Harcourt, in, in River State. And uh, some people believe that he could really turn around the fortunes of the FCT. Now, he has said that with 2 billion naira, he's going to revamp the transportation sector in the FCT. Let me hear your comments on that. Thank you very much for that uh, question. An immediate response to this is that one, two billion naira means nothing in terms of the transportation deficit that we see in the federal territory. I mean, at the current exchange rate, two billion naira is not about two million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, just above above two million dollars. And I'm asking myself, two million dollars do? What can two million dollars do? So uh, the government has to believe and understand that. The budget size of the federal government and even the state government is so small that the government alone cannot just go ahead and provide infrastructure in Nigeria. So Nigeria should quickly begin to look towards the private sector to come in with expertise and technology to support us, not just in transportation, but in all the other economic sectors in Nigeria. That's my first uh, reaction. My second reaction is that look at the plan of Governor Wike when he was building bridges in Potakos. I lived in Potakos for about five years, so I know Potakos very well. Potakos has only one road into Potakos and out. And Governor Wike spent his eight years building bridges on that one road, hoping that he's going to solve the tackle transportation problem. It will easy that it will never solve it because what every populated city like Potaco or the FCT where he now is minister is rail transportation. A single train can carry People who should have been in 200 vehicles on the road, a single train will carry them. Like you see in, um, in Abuja there, all the people coming from the Maraba, Masaka, Nyanyi, Agu, that come into the city in their cars or buses, passing traffic, gridlock, and when it's closing time, in back, all those vehicles can be taken by a few trains, all of them. And the best thing to be up the road. So, Governor Wicke should not start building bridges in the FCC as uh, he was doing for that uh, What Nigeria needs is rail transportation. So, these are my first initial comments on this new story. Yes, but he has, he has said that one of the major things he would do is to restore the rail lines and rail transportation in. Uh, in Abuja, and it's not as if he's building everything from scratch. He's looking at uh, projects that had been awarded, uh, contracts that have been awarded, and uh, maybe the payments were not complete, maybe the contractor is dragging his feet, maybe there's some corruption here and there and all that. So he's not building from scratch. So two billion just for transportation, he must have done his uh, feasibility studies and everything and known that two billion will take him. So how can you fault that?
Uh, yeah, so, um, you, you see, when you have a big problem, like the kind of infrastructure deficit, yeah, you approach it with big solutions. I mean, I, I, I saw in the news where he went to inspect the, the rail station in Abuja. Uh, that is where the whole controversy about uh, the bulletproof uh, 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 car came from. Look, that, that is not a solution. We, we can need to do it. To sit down and assess the entire potential needs of the FCT and then organize a public private investment it to attract global investors both within Nigeria and within Nigeria and he needs to uh, allocate if he wants to allocate licenses to the different sectors so you are looking at the the Guagualada as community, the Kubwa as the community, the Nyanya Maraba Asaka as the community, like that, and coming with bigger solutions. This thing is not going to solve because there is one way down from Abuja going to Kaduna. There is all one or two trains a day, and then there is a, a monorail that runs from uh, the city of Abuja to the airport. That is not going to be solution. That, that, that's what has been there for years. And it never had the solution. So I will expect Governor Wicked to bring in uh, more sustainable solutions, more global uh, based solutions to the institutional needs in the FCC. And it's not just Governor Wicked. Uh, it should also be all the other governors in Nigeria, uh, as well as uh, the federal government, Green Term. Yeah, we, we have too much infrastructure deficit in anything you can think about. There is deficit in electricity, deficit in housing, deficit in roads, deficit in water, deficit, deficit in healthcare, deficit in education. These things require big solutions. They don't just uh, require you going to inspect one and go back to the office and sit down. That is what I, I, I don't think is going to solve this problem. Mm. Well, what do you propose he, he does? Because if two billion will not solve the problem, uh, what can he do? He has a lot of other things to do. He's, he's bent on breaking houses and you know, restoring the master plan of Abuja and so many other things. He must be stepping on a lot of toes uh, if he wants to get this kind of things that he, he's aspiring to get done. Uh, but so, but what do you propose he does uh, now, just for a purpose of emphasis, to make sure that the transportation system is restored? Um, you've talked about trains, uh, you've talked about a few other things, but what else does he need to do that we're not seeing? You see, the, 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 the thing here is that, for me, I keep talking about telecoms. Keep talking about telecom because it's a telling example of how the private sector can help government of mass. You know, yes, of night uh, it was government providing phones, and we never got the phones. It was promises upon promises. Government uh, was always uh, one minister after the other. Even one minister threw his staff up to the air and said, the response is not for the poor, and all of those things that were happening in the telecom sector. Immediately, the government invited the private sector in, and the FNS and the FTS and the nine mobiles came in. They brought their money. I look at what they have done to telecoms in Nigeria. Our leaders are not taking their eyes and looking at telecoms and believing that what has happened in telecoms can happen in uh, transportation, can happen in water, can happen in electricity, can happen in uh, all these other sectors where we're experiencing deficit. That's what we need. You know, those are the days when they hard money. We are not in a world where the money is in the private sector. You understand? Know you look at Nigeria's budget. Nigeria's budget is about, well, with, with, with dollar now at about 800. 
I would think Nigeria's budget is in the round about like, like $20 billion. The entire federal government budget is around about $20 billion. But $20 billion is the money that a company like Apple makes in a day. In a single day, they make that kind of money. So you can see the sector. What the federal government and also the state government need to do is to create an enabling environment with transparency and integrity built in the whole process to attract private sector funding. If they don't do that, look, we are 63 years old this year. And the government has not been able to do this thing for us. If the government couldn't have done it in 63 years, we would not believe they would do it in the next four years. They can't do it, they said the game is change. And for me, the game changer is to bring in the private sector into this whole process of government to deliver on this infrastructure. Mm. So uh, how will the private sector recoup their money uh, without making the citizens pay, pay through the nose? Because some of these things, uh, government does it, and the excuse is that so that it will be subsidized for the benefit of the people. So if private sector goes into critical infrastructure that, like road, transportation, and all that, so what do you think the, the people will feel? Yes, so, so that, uh, that fear is always there. That with the private sector, the people will pay with their nose. But again, let us go back to telecoms. When it was government phone, I, Nika Kule, sold my wife's not nine, not four. In a I married her wife here, start to worry. That was moving in the oil industry. He did not have not nine months. I make a village sold my wife not nine not school in Abuja for 150,000 naira more than 20 years ago. How much is MTA and cool selling all to all today? So we were ready to One government was providing it. There is an ingredient that we have to work in to private sector not to make us pay to our notice. And that competition. If you remember, when the MTN has come in, MTN were telling their people that if we are 50,000 to so signal line, they even told us that uh, they cannot do per second billing. A second billing was uh, impossible. It had to take the other operators to come in. And immediately they started per second billing, MTN took into per second billing. And then the price of phone kept falling down to now you can get a SIM card for free. So just compare getting a free a SIM card for free now on what nice we are selling to us at phone. When were we paying through our nurses? Of course we were paying through our nurses during the United times. Like you see all this petrol, we are paying 600 or something now. I bet you that if this petrol goes into the private sector, we are not going to buy petrol for more than 200 naira. The industry are working. I can tell you that. So it is a mirage to think that the, through the private sector will pay through our losses. No. It's the government that builds inefficiency and makes us to cut out money for no value. If this is the private sector, make sure there's competition and we are good to go. Okay, let's not restrict it to uh, WK now. As we are wrapping up, uh, I'd like to know, if you were to advise the Minister for Transportation, what would you tell him? Sorry, come back again with the question. If you were to advise the Minister of, of Transportation how to improve the transportation system in Nigeria generally, not just Abuja now, what would you tell him? The, the advice I will give to the Minister of Transportation, which I believe is the question you ask, is the same thing that I'm saying. A $20 billion budget for the entire 45 ministers, for the entire agencies of government, for the entire uh, department, it is so small, it's not going to deliver anything. The cost of their salaries and their, their, their running cost of vehicles and traveling and all of that alone. He's going to keep that $20 billion away from the table. So let's not deceive ourselves. 
The federal government of Nigeria, including the states, don't have the money to develop infrastructure in Nigeria. The only solution is the private sector. Let me tell you one thing. Can I just give you an example now? This is a real life example. One of the best roads in Nigeria, and I travel on that road. In fact, I was on that road uh, two weeks back. One of the best roads in Nigeria today, as we speak, is the Kefi Makudi Road. This road was built with a Chinese name. But instead of the Chinese giving the money to the Federal Minister of Work, so that they will use it to travel and, and, and run their uh, operating expenditure and be speaking grammar to us, the Chinese did the road by themselves with that loan. It is the best road in Nigeria now. There are there's no other road in Nigeria that's better than that road. And as we speak, the, the, the Chinese are building toll gates on the road so that we will now pay them their money back. Let me tell you, I prefer to pay 1,000 naira to and travel on that clean road than to buy soccer job for 50,000, which is what was happening before. We travel on that road before, you will either change your soccer job, your bearing, your bushing, or your tire is gone, accidents, all sorts of things. This is what we need. If we need these things, give it to the private sector, let them do it for us, let us pay it, and let us enjoy. Otherwise, uh, we will continue suffering like this, and promises upon promises, they will never be fulfilled with $20 billion budget. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nick Agule, thank you so much for giving us your thoughts this morning. It was a pleasure having you, as always, on the show. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, uh, good day to all Nigeria. Mm. That was Nika Goulet, a public affairs analyst, talking to us from Chicago in the U.S. Uh, well, this is where we're wrapping up on the show. But before we go, let's just tell you or leave you with this uh, a quote for the day. Let yourself be drawn by the strange pool of what you love. It will not lead you astray. That's according to Rumi. This is how we draw the curtain on today's uh, show. Uh, we hope to meet again tomorrow. On behalf of the entire team, I say, let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. <laughs>